Hello, 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 and welcome to another live show. It's Monday. That means it's time to hang out here live on YouTube, chit chat, and uh, take your questions on anything that pops up. You can ask those in the live chat along the side. Um, be sure to tag here to record in there so it shows up extra clear on my screen here. And um, you can ask some questions about graphics. We'll probably talk mostly about graphics today, but you can ask me whatever pops up in terms of video production or other tools and software and all that fun stuff. Um, also, let me know. You can hear and see me just fine in the chat. It always helps to know that the um, technology is not failing me. I will try my best to not pull out the audio cable like I did last week live on the show. Um, whenever I moved my switcher forward and unplugged it, that I have learned that lesson now and I shall not recreate that in today's show. So you'll have to watch it from last week to make sure it, um, you can check that check out that failure I, I made in the middle of the show. Peter saying, AV is great, good. Uh, sounds good, looks good. Thanks so much, Mike and Eric as well. I'm glad to make it live as well, Mike Muddy says. Good to have you here live. I appreciate it. Lots of familiar faces in the chat as well. Randy, who is coming in from Dripping Springs and joining us on the members only call. Um, as a reminder, this live show is for the next 30 minutes and then we will head into the members only post hangout where you can jump into Zoom and um, hang out with some of the members of the channel and myself. I will have a few of them on this side up on the screen behind me. You can just about see them there, but we were hanging out for 30 minutes as we always do before the show and then we hang out for 30 or 45 minutes after the show as well. So for the next half hour, we'll chat about graphics and then we'll go over to the Zoom call and uh, chat about other things. If you want to join the Zoom call, you can become a member of the channel and then you will get access to the community tab of the channel and you'll see all that information on there as well. Okay, I will stay hydrated as well today. Um, happy anniversary here from SmartNet. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, the reason, or I guess the topic of today's show is H2R graphics. And the reason I chose that is because almost exactly one year ago, in fact, I should have just double checked this. I'm pretty sure I'm right that one year ago today or tomorrow, I did a live stream here on the um, this very channel and I launched H2R Graphics version 2. Um, and as I flick through my um, long list of live streams, I've done a lot of live streams this, this year actually, so that's why it's taken me so long to go through them all. And... Um, and take a look. Yes, December the 13th. So um, if you haven't watched that already, you're more than welcome to check that out. But a year ago today, it's playing ads right now. That's why I'm not going to cut to it. Um, a year ago today, I made, let me see, super source. There we go. Yeah, this video. I had. I even had a little video at the start. I should have I should have played that video at the start of this um, live stream as well. But it was on the, it does say 11 months ago here, but it was December the 13th. So as of tomorrow, it'll be one year since um, H2R Graphics version two has been released to the world. And um, it's been a fun year. In fact, today, one year, almost one year to the date, I launched version two dot, um, let me go to the download page here, version 2.12. So basically once per month, I've been releasing. That's not entirely true. At the start of the year, I released a lot of versions. And then as the year went on, I kind of went for more of a monthly approach, which is a much more stable way to release um, the software. So it's been a year. We can talk about what is new in version 2.12 today. We can talk about some things that may come in the future, or we can talk about any issues that you may have found um, testing out any of the versions and something you'd like to see in a future version. But coming in from Hampstead is Peter. Good to have you here, Peter. Who else came in here? Um, member of the channel, Sandor, coming in from Hungary as well. That's pretty cool. Someone was playing with a PTZ camera. Yeah, I was messing around. I actually have a little um, a little remote for the bird dog PTZ camera that I was using at the start of the show over there. So <clears throat> I was just making sure it worked and it does. It's very, as you can see here, if I cut back to that again, it's not very smooth with the remote. It's not. It's obviously not much of a controller. It's more of a course, set it up and then forget it and leave it there. So I was just making sure that still worked and it does. It's nice to have that though. It's the smallest little controller. Um, it comes with it. Oh, I nearly <laughs> dropped it. It, 
comes with it. Um, and it's nice to have in your pocket just in case you are away from your main controller. And I don't even have one here, so it's all I really have. Hello from Dallas, Texas. Hello, DJ Ware. Good to have you here. New Zealand as well, coming in from um, a long way away at a very inconvenient time for you, I'm sure, Peter, but I appreciate that a lot. Um, USA as well. Excellent. Uh, snowy Oregon. Yeah, it's cold here as well, Jeff. I um, I was just saying in the pre-show there that I went home for some dinner, and I it was nice and warm at home. It's kind of cold in the office here, as you might have seen from the office intro video that I made. It is a big space, and heating it is costing a penny or two, so... Um, yeah, it, we don't keep it very warm here. So it was nice and warm at home and it's quite cold here. And I managed to stupidly turn off the radiator before I left here as well. So it's extra cold today. So I've got my jumper on. Mike says, I remember the exciting launch of h Graphics version 2. Me too. I remember it like it was like it was yesterday. And let's celebrate TV. Phil, good to have you here as well, joining in and joining us on the, on the call as well, which is excellent. And hello from Kentucky here. Hello from Ben. Excellent, excellent. Hello from um, India as well. And um, Monterey, California from John as well. Lots of faces that I've seen here in the chat before. Excellent to have you all here. Okay, I say we just launch into what's new in version 2.12. And then if any questions pop up along the way on that, then we can um, we can cover those. I need to look at my notes though. <laughs> I've got so many different versions that I forget exactly what's new. Oh yeah, so one of the first things that's new in this version, you will see on the website here, is that there's now a Linux beta added to the website. I must admit, the reason it's taken almost exactly one year to launch the Linux version is because it's not something I am at all familiar with. I am, I know nothing of Linux, basically. Um, I've launched... The first time I've ever played with Linux was about a week ago, whenever I was testing this out. Previous to that, um, I don't think I've really played with many flavors of Linux at all. So all the OSs that you can get out there, I, I have not played with them. So I don't know enough about their goods and bads, quirks and um, fixes for those things. So I have held off for a while, but I, I finally got around to building one the other day. That's why I have it on here as a beta you can download it and let me know if, if it works. I personally tested it in uh, Ubuntu. I think that's how you say it. Um, and then one of the channel Discord members tested it on Pop OS. I think that's what it was called. Um, again, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. And then I was just chatting today with someone else who tested it on a different OS and it wasn't working on there um, as of this version. So I can imagine your results may vary with the Linux build. But do let me know if you try it and what the error is, if there is one, and then we can figure out how to fix it and go from there. I didn't expect this to be a flawless beginning of the Linux career, um, but having launched it myself on a virtual machine and seeing that it actually worked somewhere was, was a good start. So I just thought I'd push it out there and see what people said. So if you have tried that or you're thinking of trying that, then do let me know in the, not probably not in the chat, you can talk about it in the live chat today, but not in the comments below this video. Do try to reach out to me via email and let me know what went wrong and, um, and we can figure out what the fix for that is. Okay, so something I showed off a little bit in the past, one of the new features in this version is the QR code pro graphics. So I don't have one here, which is fine. I can just create one QR code and then add in any URL, so the, the idea here being that you can just add in a URL for the QR code, of course, and then some helpful little text for that. So if I type in my URL, h2r dot, you probably won't type it in, to be honest. You'll probably pull it from the website somewhere. And then in the text below, I like to put in something that's useful for people who don't, are not able to scan things. Um, so for example, a short version of what the URL would be for them. And I know this is going to go on top of my graphics here, so I'll position it off to the bottom uh, left there. And if I show that, then you get a QR code, as you would expect. And if you scan that QR code, it should take you to the um, Hitch2R graphics website. Let me see. If I, because I, I just wanted to make sure 
You know, with QR codes, you never really know if it actually works until you, you scan it yourself and, um, and see if it works. Yeah, it did. Okay, cool. So <laughs> it works. Yay. Um, so the idea here being that you can just create QR codes on the fly for your viewers and then send them off to those links. Um, what I quite like about this is I showed this off on a few on my live stream last week. No, two weeks ago, was it? When I talked about the um, Cyber Monday deals. It was a great way to just push people towards links and you can include whatever you want in the links, of course, because it's a handy little QR code. So that is one of the the newest additions to historical graphics as a pro graphic. Let me check in here, make sure nothing's going terribly wrong with um, with my setup today. Eric saying, best thing about historical graphics version two is that now finally nobody is asking for bug fixes on version one on historical Discord. Yeah, and nobody asks for oh wait, I need to hide that um, that QR code. Nobody asks me anything about version one anymore. Actually, I I. Don't remember the last time I got an email about version um, version one, though I think a lot of people still use it because I still have some analytics in there, and they are they have not went to zero yet. So someone is um, someone is using it. Uh, Elmar saying here watching on Linux Mint. So if you're able to try installing it, I will appreciate it a lot, and we can. Um, we can compare notes afterwards on whether or not it worked on your computer. It's always fun to try and build something for a different OS that you don't know that much about because people will offer you QR, or QR codes. I'm obsessed with QR codes. Offer you uh, issues and then it's it's like learning over again. Like, what does that even mean? Why do why do I? What is this problem? How do I fix it? You know, someone else joining from New Zealand here. Excellent. Nice to have you here. Wise Guy Productions. Um, hello, Frankie. Eric says, having the QR code generator in line in his store is amazing. One less step required to get that into the run of show. Yes, uh, that, that is one of the... I can't believe I haven't added that already. It's one of those um, additions. In fact, it was a question from Jason, um, who hangs out in the Discord sometimes, months ago to add a QR option in there, but I finally got around to it, and it's nice that it just generates it within the application. It doesn't... The QR code itself is not doing anything weird, like bouncing you through here to records server or anything weird like that. It's just giving you an exact, exact um, QR code to the link that you're putting in there. So you don't have to go off to some weird website, create a weird QR code that you don't like the look of because maybe you bounce through their website and all that stuff. So no, it's as small, clean, as simple as possible. Um, ben says built for restream. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, oh, uh, uh, H2R Graphics does not have restream support for like chat or anything like that. Um, so no, if that's what you mean. So that is a look at the QR code and Linux options. Now I need to go back to my um, notes here. Oh yeah, so here's a cool one. I have in my launcher, I can go back to that again. So in the h our graphics launcher, a new addition in version 2.12 is this new open on button. Um, it's not going to be so exciting because I only have one monitor attached to my computer, which is the one you're looking at right now. But when you click on this open on button, it will give you a, a drop down list of all of the monitors attached to this computer. And then you can, with the click of one button instead of multiple buttons um you can open an output on full screen on that output so if i was to click on this now you'll see that the output opens here which is this green one there's no graphics on there right now because i'm not showing any graphics on this particular live stream but you get the point it opens it on the output that you have um, told it to open on um, and it's pretty handy if you have like a secondary monitor attached you can scroll down and see that monitor click on open and then it'll open full screen on that monitor. Again, <clears throat> something that I've wanted to add for a while, but it's nice to get it in there. Some of these things are like on the list from the early days and eventually I'm gonna to get to them. And now it's here. Okay, cool. Um, what else is in this version? Yes, I just skipped over this link to graphics one because I think that's a pretty important and good one. 
but um, I think it's one of the best ones in this version. So for a long time, people have been asking for groups. I want to grab a few graphics, put them together in a group, and then they act as a group, of course. And I think I've always thought that's a great idea, of course, and I always wanted to um, make that work as you'd expect it to. But I never really got the grouping functionality working the way I wanted it to work. As in, when you grab one graphic and put it on top of another, and now they're inside of a subgroup, and how does that look on the rundown? Are they, a couple of them, are they indented? Do they come up differently? I, I never liked that. I never found a good solution for that that worked visually for me. But what I came up with instead is the notion of linking graphics to other graphics. So, for example, excuse me, um, for the end of my live show, I have two graphics here. One of them is a moving gradient graphic. So that looks like this. And I usually put it over my wide shot. And it just gives this uh, slight little notion of something's happening behind here, but you're not entirely sure what. And then additionally, I will play my credits over top of that. Don't worry if you're just joining. The show is not over yet. I'm just making a point here. Um, so that's what I would traditionally do for my graphics. And in fact, for months now, uh, I, it's time to admit that I have been using this linked graphic feature. I just never released it because it was not quite um, the way I wanted it to work. But now it works the way I want it to work. So, oh, I should go back to here. So now what I have done is said that my credits are what I would consider to be my main graphic here. And then if I s just go over my screen, you can see that I have a couple of little colors to indicate that these two are linked together. So the solid graphic being the main one, and then this other one with a little arrow inside there is um, is going to be triggered by the, the main graphic. And in fact, if I go in and I edit this moving gradient graphic and open up my trigger section, and I just scroll in here so you can see it nice and big, you can see here that the linked to graphic option is set to credits. I could change that to any of the other graphics on the rundown, but I'll leave it at credits. And I have this other little option here to say, how long should I wait before I update this um, moving gradient? How long before I bring it on air or take it off here? By default, it's set to zero, but I could set that up to like one second, for example. Now this is in milliseconds, so you can be quite precise. So I'll set it to 1000 milliseconds, which would be one second. And now if I was to take my credits on air, you'll see that it takes a second there before the actual moving gradient um, comes on air. And if I click again, the credits disappear, and then it takes another second for the moving gradient to do its thing. What's nice here though is um, I can put my moving gradient anywhere on this rundown that I want to put it, and it'll still be linked to the other graphic. I can also jump into this video, for example, um, go down to the trigger section. Let me just scroll in again. And then I could also link it up to the credits if I wanted to. And now if I show all three together, I don't know how this will look. Let's find out. Yeah, there you go. So the video played, it waited a second, showed the moving gradient, and the credits were running as well. So in theory, I could have many graphics all stacked next to each other or anywhere on the rundown, and then I can link them together and use the color coding to decide what's going to happen whenever I click on this graphic. What's really nice actually about this way of doing it, I think, anyway, of course I think this, but the video graphic here is independent of the other two. Um, I can click on the video graphic and play that video, and it's not going to automatically play anything else in that um, linked area because the video graphic itself is linked to the credits, but the credits are not linked back to the video graphic. So I can play the moving gradient by itself and it just works and just shows and hides independently. So if you had a certain still image that you always wanted to show during your show, uh, always wanted to display during your show, that makes it a bit clear, but you have something else you want to link together, then you can do that independently. So that's the idea behind linking graphics to each other. Wow, that was a lot of chit chat. As always though, I'm keen to, this has been tested by a few people over on 
our Discord server, actually a nice handful of people uh, are testing the app every single time. But if there's something in there that doesn't make sense or not working as you expect it to, then I am all ears for improvements or features or all that good stuff. It's always welcome. Um, Vic says, I noticed the control room view on the previous version wouldn't clear when pressing C when using the draw feature. Was that fixed? Oh, that's a good one, Vic. I did not actually, I don't know if anyone told me that or if they did, I totally forgot about it. So if you could uh, send me a quick email about that, it would really help big time because then I can just make a note of it and fix it. If you did tell me about that already, then apologies. Uh, I must have missed that. Grant wants to know, does H2R graphics support mutual exclusivity in the sense of here's a set of graphics only one of these can be shown at a time no not currently that's a good idea um if i'm thinking like a use case for that might be that you would have like five images yeah uh, actually i don't know give me give me a use case for grant or maybe a couple of use cases and I will have a think about how that would work. Um, what I'm a little bit nervous about is getting into like a deep way of explaining that. Like, for example, the um, the linked to triggers that I've set up here with the color coding of showing what's linked to what is already a step in a direction of complexity. So I want to make sure that any more complexity I add in there makes sense and it's easily explained. That's not to say we couldn't do that, but I would be interested to hear um, what would be in mind for a use case. Um, maybe you've already answered. Or if you do answer, I can I can loop back to that again. Uh, Elmar, coming back with the Linux app image starts for me after making it an execution executable have to play with it so it does launch for you then you're saying um and that's great so you have to make it an executable yeah like i said i had no idea about linux stuff and so i was downloading this app image onto my virtual linux machine that i uh, you can luckily you can jump onto things like google cloud uh something instances i don't remember what they call it and you can just launch your own computer on there and i did that with uh, ubuntu quite a minimal computer and then it ran and I was happy and away I went. Here to record, is it possible to use custom fonts, says Peter? Yes, absolutely. So custom fonts is a little bit strange in, in my application. I, I do, I am very much aware of that. Um, you go into the theme section in here and you can choose font. And in my case here, I have this, oh, I should probably zoom into this. I have a custom font installed on my computer called Inter that I use for for my graphics, but you could type in the name of any font that's installed on your computer and that will work just fine. You need to type it in as it is listed on your computer, but um, that'll work just fine. I know that's a bit strange and there, it should be a drop down, but keep in mind that even right now, my graphics that you're looking at, well, you're not looking at them right now. Uh, these graphics here are not running on this Mac that you can see. They're running on my PC, which is running behind me. So I would have to make sure if it was a drop down, which computer, I don't even know which computer I should drop down that list um, of fonts for. <clears throat> oh. So that's why it is a free type box. I don't love it. It works. So I'm happy with it working until there's a better way. Vic, you will do, excellent. Hello from Greece, is there any way to display the Zoom chat or Q&A in H2R? Good question. Um, last version, I added something called um, HTTP listeners, which you can always learn about on the documentation. This is a little bit of a sidestep into um, development land here, but I do have, huh, where is it at? Um, in my data sources on the documentation here, and you can always go to that via the homepage, you'll see this new HTTP listener option, and you can send in Zoom chat data like I have done here. If you use another piece of um, 
technical know-how called Zoom OSCJS. So there's a few steps involved, definitely. It will not be for the light of hearted, but you can use Zoom OSC, Zoom OSCJS, and send the data in that way. There's no native, technically nav native support for Zoom at this point. Um, it's a little bit more involved right now to try and get something like that to work. So that there is a way to do it, but it might not be exactly the way you want to do it. Co-op for two says, time for me to make a normal request for a simple text box where you can put a manual list of text lines that would be loaded into a social comments feed for queuing up simulated YouTube comments. Yeah, that that is exactly what the HTTP request is for. Um, I know it's not quite as simple as a... Um, manual list of messages. Although I do have a solution for you there and we can launch into that right now. So on my variables list here, I could use list 1.1, list 2.1.2, one .2, sorry, and list 1.3. These are the little selectors that are above the, um, the list columns here. I could put those in my social graphic in this um, content area. So in here, I could put, for example, list 1.1. .1. Um, actually, I guess that I want it to be 1.2. And then this list.1.1. I hope, did I set this up to work? Maybe. Yeah, there you go. So now what you're seeing is data that's being pulled from my lists here. In fact, if I was to write something a little bit more like, hey, here is my comment. Thanks for reading it. Um, and set that as the selected list row. You'll see whenever I show this again, you can see that comment. Uh, readying it, good, good English there. That was good work. Um, <laughs> but you should probably write better English than me. And you can also set up a custom image here. So you could override an image and set up your own icon. For example, this Zoom logo that I've just thrown in there. And now whenever I click on this, we have all the pieces in place there. You have your name, the comment, and a custom logo that you're showing as well. So I would head down that direction if you're going to do the um, user-generated YouTube style comments, but not using YouTube. Peter says, thanks, that would be helpful to choose them separately for each text object as our lower third is bold for the name and condensed for the second um, line of Symfon. Yes, that's a good question, or that's a good follow-up, and that's where CSS would get involved. So it, that part of CSS wouldn't be a ton of work for you. Um, what you could do here in this theme here, scroll down, go into the CSX, CSS option, excuse my language, um, and then this is actually a new feature in this one. There's now a text input here you can use instead of the CSS selector option. Oh, um, and in here you could type in the CSS. I actually quite like the, the editor version. So if you in your H2R small text use a different font, you can put that font name in here and uh, use that instead. So the option is in there. I know it's a little bit more like involved. Again, if, you, if you're not into that kind of... Um, CSS -y kind of stuff, then you can do that. And you can ask on the Discord if you're not sure how to do any CSS. Someone or me will help you do that for sure. Especially for a, a text related CSS, it's a fairly simple one to get right in there. So ask. And Jeff says, any chance of getting a drop shadow on font? Again, CSS is the way to go. I don't have all of the options in there because I've left. CSS as an option as well. So if you're not sure how to do text uh, shadow in CSS, then go for it. L have a quick Google, see if you can find it. If you can't find it, then ask in the Discord or over email. I can always I always reply to people with links to useful CSS documentation, or I just help them build the theme right there in the email. So just just go for that. Eric says, "Don't forget to hit that like button. Appreciate it." Oh, is that the time already? Seven thirty. Okay. 30 minutes for a show about new features is um, is fast. Let me make sure I get through all of the follow-up things here. Grant, one use case would be to ensure that a graphic that renders in the same place doesn't overlap each other. That's a good use case. Um, I'll, I can have a think about that. 
a reminder of my use case. I use HTWR to show user comments on YouTube exactly as you are doing right now. But I always have some questions submitted early by email. I'd love to queue those in a social. Mm, yeah. Then HTTP would... Oh, yeah, that probably that wouldn't work either. I'll, I'll have a think about that. Um, I want to get more data into the social section, definitely. So I'll have to keep thinking about the best way to do that. Love the new features. How is the cropping of the graphics usable? Um, that's a good question. A, a feature I never mentioned was the cropping of graphics. So let's show that off real quick. If I go into my rundown here, you can see in my video section, in fact, in all the graphics now, I have this new drop down for crop, and it lets you do a top, left, right, or bottom crop on your graphics. Now, I'm going to have to just, uh, in fact, why don't I just do this? I can put in like a 500 crop on the right hand side of the video, show my video, and nothing happens. Good. That's excellent work. It may be a vmix thing. Oh yeah, sorry. I know I didn't work. It's percentage. <laughs> I should write that on there. So I put in fifty percent now instead, as you can see here. Uh, on the on the crop, I can go to fifty percent, and you can see there it goes down fifty percent of the screen. Five hundred was way too far, clearly. Um, and I can add a little bit of crop to the top as well. I'm just working in the background here to see if I can make this work and crop it down. Now, the video, it seems unlikely that you would crop a video, but you might, or an image, but more likely you would crop a, um, what do you call it, a web graphic. So if I just grab my, I'll get rid of that video, grab the URL to h 2 graphics and add a web page graphic, you might find yourself wanting to show a website but um, not in its entirety. Oh, that's interesting. The H2R graphics website doesn't have a full black background, but this could be a good example. I'll crop the bottom to be at 50% just to get rid of all that stuff there. And then I'll crop the right as well to get my picture back in again. And maybe, you know, that's, where, that's all I want to show is just that much of the website. And now I have a web graphic, graphic on top of my image with, um, with some cropping enabled. Uh, you probably wouldn't do exactly this, but at least you have cropping options. That was fun. It's always fun to show stuff live and see what happens. Last few questions before we head over to the post show on Zoom. Does your output allow for web output as opposed to chroma key? Yes, all of the web, all the outputs are available on IP addresses and you can open those up in OBS, for example, and you don't have to do any keying. In my case, I'm using vMix today, and I'm putting my graphics on top of that, and the background is transparent, so I don't have to do any keying or chroma keying or anything like that. Did I get through all of my graphics features that I wanted to talk about? Um, one last one to talk about, which people have asked for for a long time, and a new pro feature, is the ability to do multiple variable lists. As you can see here, I can add in the non-pro version, you can add one, as you always could. And then uh, in the pro version, you can add multiple lists. So I have up to four lists on my project here for, for some reason. I don't know why I would need this many, but I can I can have them. I can import to each of the lists. I can import CSV if I wanted to. I can update all of the lists as you'd expect it to. And then I can use the list um number dot one, number dot two, so list two dot one or list three dot one, I can use those in my graphics and it all works just as single lists did as well. Loads more features to even get to, it turns out, in the 30 minute segment. Um, but that is a look at what's new in today's um, graphics update. One year into the project, it's been a fun year, definitely. I've I did a lot of updates in the early days because I was really um, I was on a good momentum for it. But then I realized I really wanted to slow down and actually put things through the test a lot better, um, add a lot more features per release instead of small features in small releases, and it's worked out nicely. 
Cool. So if you are wanting to hang around and chat some more, you can always do that. You can become a member of the channel with the join link below all of the videos and you will get access to our community tab and you'll get access to a special section over on Discord as well. And in both of those places, you can get a link to today's members only pre and post show. The pre show happened before the live stream and the post show is happening right now over on Zoom. Thanks so much for watching along to this live stream and for seeing what's new in H2R graphics this month. Hopefully I'll have some fun updates for you in the coming year as well. I have um, I have plenty more releases to come out of H2R graphics version two, so there's no worries there. It's not one year in and I'm starting to give up. Uh, absolutely not. The, the to-do list of fixes, features, and also improvements and graphic ideas are still um, coming in nicely. So uh, yeah, loads more updates to come for sure. Alrighty, I guess that comes to the end of the show. Just a big thanks to all of you for watching. Oh, I forgot I had that video on as well. <laughs> thanks to Jeremy, Revolutionary Lightboards, Marlon, and Jim as well from Cloud Bedrock. Let me move that video. I linked that during the show there. And thanks to all of you for watching along. I'll see you in the post show if you're going to be over there. Alrighty, bye-bye. See ya.